Hi, my name is Andy Spoon. We're going to take a look at using Pasco Capstone software and the 850 interface to do Boyle's Law. This is going to look at the relationship between pressure and volume. The setup I have with me is an absolute pressure sensor. As you can see, I have it connected to my 850 interface, and I also have a 60 milliliter syringe. Let's go ahead and get Pasco Capstone set up. So I'm going to select the table and graph quick start template, and I'm going to put pressure in my first column and I'm going to create a new user inner data column for my volume. I'm also going to put my pressure and volume onto the axis of my graph. The last thing I need to do before I begin collecting data is I need to change my sampling mode. In this activity, we're not going to be continuously sampling the pressure data. We're going to be taking discrete points at discrete volumes. So I'm going to change from continuous mode to keep mode. This will allow me to begin data collection with the preview button and then hit the keep sample button as I need to collect data. All right, I'm now going to have my lab assistant come and adjust my syringe for me. We're going to begin at 60 milliliters and I'm going to start previewing. All right, so once we're at 60 milliliters, I'm going to keep that sample and enter in 60 for my first data point. All right, I'm going to adjust it to 55. Keep. 50 milliliters. Keep. 45. Keep. 40 milliliters. Keep. 35 milliliters. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and make an intentional error, which is not uncommon with this activity. I'm going to have her keep it at 35, and I'm going to go ahead and take my next sample, but tell it that it's at 30. And as you can see, I can tell that there was an error made because my data values are pretty close to each other. So I'm now going to ask her to go and adjust that to 30. So she adjusts it to 30 milliliters. You'll see in Capstone, I have the ability to go back and select that previously recorded data set and it shows me the new live preview it's going to write over that. So I'm going to just resample over that one. Okay, now let's go to 25. Keep. 20. Keep. And we'll take our last one at 15 milliliters. And keep. Now to stop data collection, I'm just going to hit the stop button. Okay. Now let's go over into our graph. And this time we're now going to look at three different ways we can analyze this data, trying to work out the relationship between pressure and volume. My first way is I'm going to just do a standard curve fit on the graph in its current axis. And we're going to see if we can determine what the relationship is by the best curve fit. So I'm going to begin by scaling my data and then taking a guess at which curve fit I think is going to be most appropriate. In this case, I'm going to choose the inverse fit. And as you can see, the inverse fit does a very good job of matching my data. So in this case, I can confirm that it is an inverse relationship between pressure and volume. Now the second way I can confirm this is I can create a new calculation multiplying the pressure times the volume and seeing if it remains constant. In an inverse relationship, it should. So let's go back over into our table. In our table toolbar, you'll see I have a button that allows me to create a new calculation. So let's select that one. It automatically populates it with volume, and I'm just going to multiply it times pressure. Now to get pressure in there, I can right click, go into insert data, and insert my pressure. Now I'm going to use my statistics available in my table and see that my standard deviation is 24, and that's less than a 1% error for this value for it to remain constant. So I have pretty good data, and once again confirming that it's an inverse relationship. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to linearize my data. So let's go back over into the graph. I'm going to turn off my curve fit, 